Okay, 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 okay. <sighs> Made a video talking about the new Canon SL3 that Canon kind of quietly released into the marketplace without much fanfare, and I kind of understand why, because it's a little bit, not controversial, but there's some interesting decisions that they made with that camera, but I've been getting so many questions on that last video about specific scenarios. Okay, well, what about photography? Should I get this one or this one or this one? Or what about for travel or for video? Or for... And I thought I would make a video just kind of walking through a few different scenarios photography, beginner and intermediate, video in a couple different scenarios, live streaming and traveling, and talk about which camera I would recommend for specific scenarios and a little bit of the why behind them. But I will make this disclaimer. The quality of the images of the cameras, M50, SL3, SL2, they're basically the same. Like there, there is like negligible difference between the actual quality of the images, whether that's still images or moving images, movies, that people aren't gonna be able to tell the difference, really. Like if you're, if you're starting out taking photos, there are a thousand other variables that are gonna make the difference between having a nice image and not a nice image. And the difference in the technical abilities of the camera, it doesn't really matter. But there are features that are going to make a difference both in your ability to capture those images as well as you know things like frame rates on videos people can tell the difference between 30 frames per second video and 24 frames per second video and depending on what you want to do that may not matter but it might matter and so we'll just walk through the different scenarios and hopefully clarify which cameras are best for which scenarios Hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. And this this is this is a talking video. It's it's not full of examples. I had the SL2, I had the M50, I used it a ton. I haven't played with the SL3 yet, but it's essentially an M50, just repackaged as an SL3, but with a few features gone. Okay, it doesn't matter. But let's get into it and talk about photography. You're going, I want a Canon camera for photography. And let's say you're a beginner, meaning this is your first kind of real camera, or maybe you bought a camera but many years ago and you're still not you know, super advanced, not wanting to spend a ton of money, but you wanna have something better than your phone so you can start capturing some nice images. If that is you, the camera that I actually recommend is not the SL2 or SL3, it's the M50. And the reason I'm saying the M50 is because it is a mirrorless camera. What's interesting about mirrorless cameras is when you look through, the eye hole, we'll call it, because that's a funny word, is you're not actually seeing the real world, you're looking at a screen. There's a screen inside of here because it is mirrorless. On SLR cameras, there's a mirror that shows you a viewfinder of the real world, which some people like because you're seeing something real as opposed to a screen. But the nice thing about seeing a screen when you do this is what you see on the screen is exactly the photo that you are going to take. Whereas when you work with a digital SLR camera, you're looking through a mirror and it might be bright out, it might be dark out, but those actually have no correlation to the actual image that you capture because you kind of have to compensate and guess based off meters and on practicing that you could look through the viewfinder and it could be super bright and sunny out, but if you have your settings wrong, the picture that you take is going to be dark and you're gonna look and go, oh, it's too dark and then you're gonna adjust and then you're gonna shoot and you're gonna go, oh, it's too bright and you're gonna have to fiddle around with it. With a mirrorless camera, it's much faster to learn what the settings do because what you look through and see on the screen is exactly the photo that you're going to take. And so for starting out, I think that's a really powerful tool for helping you learn faster when you're starting out and you're not gonna miss all those moments when you're trying to take pictures of your kids or of your pets or of you know traveling and there's something specific you wanna see on the street and, and you're going quickly and you're not super experienced you take the shot and you're like, I got, oh, it's super dark or it's way too bright. You will know when you look through here exactly the photo that you're gonna take. So that's why I'd say the M50 for starting up. If you're more of an intermediate photographer and you've already you know, had a camera and you're looking to upgrade and, and you're trying to figure this out, I actually wouldn't recommend the SL2, SL3, or M50. I would say get the 77D. That's a Canon 77D. And the reason I say that is it's essentially a SL2 inside, but they're gonna give you dual controls where you can control both your aperture and your shutter speed on double dials and a few more buttons. It's a little bit heavier, but 
When you're into photography, that can be okay, but it's gonna let you shoot much quicker because you've got dual dials on it. And it's really not even that much more. For reference right now, an SL2 body is 500, an SL3 body is 550, and an M50 is 580. But in the kits, both the SL2 and M50 are on for 600 bucks, and the SL3 is 650. The body of a 77D, which is a much more robust body, is 650. So it's about 100 bucks more than an SL3 and it's worth it if you're an intermediate photographer to get into that. To be clear, across all these cameras, the focusing is going to be pretty similar. Something like the 77D actually gives you more focusing points, but between the SL3 and the SL2, they're basically similar. They use a pretty simple AF system. On video, it's fantastic. For photos, it's a little bit limited. The M50 actually gives you some more options because it's mirrorless. Um, but yeah, focusing wise, it's similar. So for photography, the 77D is definitely it's a step up. You get 45 focus points as opposed to nine, a couple more dials, so intermediate. But if you're a beginner and you're just starting out, don't worry about any of that. Just, just worry about learning and honing your skills. For video, let's talk about video. And this one, I guess, is a little bit tricky because there's so many different scenarios. One of the things that the SL3 did was it dropped the ability to shoot at 24 frames per second at 1080p. 24 frames per second is what every movie you've ever seen is basically shot in. And it's got this extra thing called motion blur because it's not as many frames. It doesn't feel like a soap opera or if you have one of those newer TVs and the motion is turned up too high and everything, the motion's too smooth. 24 frames per second is cinematic and it, it's intentionally blurry and not super smooth. And if you're wanting to shoot like film like stuff, you're going, I want to make, you know, movies that are beautiful, that, that look really nice. I want to get into filmmaking. Then your options are the M50 or the SL2. But for me personally, I would be trying to get the M50. It's going to be a little bit more money, not just because the camera body is a little bit more money, but to get other lenses, you're going to need the Canon adapter, which I think is around $100-ish. Don't get the cheap adapters. You'll be tempted to. There's a number of brands out there that make cheap adapters. The problem with the cheap adapters is that they are noisy. They don't dampen the sound as well. And when you use great lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35, it's going to be so, so noisy it gets picked up in the microphone and will essentially make it unusable. SL2, if you're on a budget, is good for filmmaking because it looks really nice. The images, I've got a whole review. There'll be a link below on kind of vlogging and doing some kind of cinematic-y stuff on a very simple setup. But lenses are also really cheap for Canons, which is awesome. You get a 50 millimeter and a 10 to 18 millimeter uh, for like, I think 350 is the kit for both those lenses. And you can do so much stuff with that. That's that's all in the other video. It's like the perfect like vlogging cinematic cheap kit. But the M50 gives you digital image stabilization, which can be handy in certain situations if you're using a not stabilized lens. It, it compromises quality a little bit, but the M50 and the package that it is, again, there'll be another link below, how you can set up the M50 for filmmaking and it looks pretty darn good. But I would say SL2 or M50, take your pick, the M50, it has a few more features, a little bit better if you wanna get in the filmmaking side. If all you care about is just you need videos. You want to shoot YouTube videos. Maybe it's like a makeup tutorial or some kind of tips and tricks channel or, you know, even reviewing tech where it's not film. It's just you want a camera that is great for YouTube. The SL3 is a pretty good option. OK, you're, you're going to lose that 24 frames per second at 1080p. You can get it back at 4K if you want to do that. But just 1080p, 30 frames per second quality is going to be good. You don't have to fiddle with adapters, so it's not as complicated. It's going to be well balanced. And again, Canon lenses are quite reasonably priced. So you can get a 50 millimeter F1.8 for whatever, 150 bucks or wide angle. There's so many good lens options and you don't have to play with adapters. So SL3 would be good for that. But honestly, if your situation is you just want a camera to film yourself, any of them, just, just, just buy one and start. They all do good quality 1080p video. The M50 and the SL3 have 4K, it's zoomed in even more. So, but they're basically the same. If you're going, I want to shoot 4K, either one, M50 or SL3, but the SL3 doesn't require adapters for all the lenses. If you're doing vlogging, let's talk specifically about vlogging. Vlogging on a budget, the best option is actually the M50. And, and the simple reason for that is the kit lens that comes with the M50 is a 15 millimeter on the wide angle, whereas SL2, SL3 are 18 millimeters on the wide angle. And that means that it's more of your face and less of what's going on around you. Whereas the M50, not only is it, it's tiny and small and so compact, so it's less 
intrusive to wherever you are and less noticeable, but it's also a wider lens on that kit lens, which is awesome because yeah, you just get less of your face pores and more of what's going on around you. So I would say the M50, if you're starting out for vlogging and I've got, I think videos on vlogging reviews for that. I really like the M50 for vlogging. It's great. SL3, SL2, they, you know, they also do good, but M50 is where I would start if you were getting for vlogging. If you're doing live video, the SL3, because the SL3 has a clean HDMI output with autofocus. Now, this is according to what I've read in the manual. So you, you may need to confirm this, and I haven't got a chance to have my hands on it yet, but according to the manual, it has a clean HDMI output. What that means is you can go HDMI out of the camera, plug it into some kind of capture card to do live streaming, so it turns it kind of into a webcam, and there's no icons on the screen, and the autofocusing works. On the SL2 and the M50, M50 for sure, you can have a clean HDMI output with no icons, but you have to turn off the autofocusing or else the box shows up on the screen of where your face is, but you don't want that. You want great autofocus so you can lean in, lean out, do whatever you want to do. It's tracking your face and keeping you in focus. The SL3 is the only one that's good at that. Going back to, I just mentally remember a couple of things. If you're serious about filmmaking and yeah, the SL3 has a clean HDMI output, so that could open some options, but if you don't have 24 frames per second, it's still kind of useless. The SL3 for photography, if you're semi-serious about photography, one of the problems with it is apparently they removed one of the pins on the top to use third-party flashes and triggers so that if you're wanting to use flashes and other things, you would have to use the Canon ones, which are more expensive. I use the Young Newell ones and they're awesome. And I have some triggers so I can put this thing on top and trigger a bunch of flashes at the same time. You don't get that option with the SL3. M50 and SL2, I believe are both good to go. Last one is around travel. If you're going, I just want a camera for traveling this place, that place, going all around the world. I love the M50 because of its size. It's kind of got all the features. The battery life on it is so-so, but getting a couple of extra cheap third-party batteries. But it's like, even as long as you're not doing like serious video for a day and you just wanna do photos, the ability to just kind of stick that thing in your pocket with a couple of the, you know, you have to be okay with the, the extra lenses that you can buy on the system, the 22 millimeter, what is that, F2, and the new 34 millimeter F1.4. Other those are, are meaning you don't need an adapter, they work great and they're small and they're compact and they're light and it's just nice to have that camera with you where if you're going you can throw it in a jacket or in a purse or in something really compact. SL2 and SL3 are still very compact for a digital SLR, like very compact but still not as compact as the mirrorless systems. So hopefully that clarifies maybe some questions some people had on which ones. You're welcome to disagree with me in the comments or, or, or ask more questions or find out. That's just where my head's at right now and hopefully that was helpful to you. I'm Justin Rivas, thanks for watching.